Oh, hi everybody. Um, I'm Ursula Crawford. I am the Family Resource and Engagement Coordinator with Early Childhood Cares. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Early Childhood Cares, um, we are an agency that provides free early intervention and early childhood special education services for children from birth to five throughout Lane County um, for kiddos who qualify as having a developmental delay or developmental disability. That could include um, areas of concern might be behavior, speech and language, gross and fine motor, or cognitive. So if you have a kiddo that you have any developmental concerns about, please feel free to call our office at 541-346-2578. And um, today I have Amelia here from Adventure Children's Museum. And she's gonna just talk a little bit about the museum and things that they're offering at the moment. Um, and also she has some fun at home activities for you to do with your kiddos. So Amelia. Hey, um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about the museum in case you haven't been in before. We've been open, well, we're closed currently because of the coronavirus, but we um, opened the museum three and a half years ago. We're inside the Valley River Center Mall. We've got about 11,000 square feet of exhibit space um, with over 21 exhibits, like a sushi hut, um, a pirate ship, a Kitty Hawk flight test tunnel, things like that. All sorts of interactive exhibits for kids. Um, those are currently closed. Although museums are allowed to be open, interactive exhibits are not. So we have a bunch of other stuff going on right now. Um, we're doing a craft kit delivery service. Uh, it's called Quick Crafts. And we package materials for between 15 and 18 crafts into a kit and we deliver it to your house if you're local. And then we do video tutorials on YouTube so that um, Families can follow along with crafts, and those crafts are tied to a holiday. Like a watermelon day was one of the holidays in August that we just finished a pinwheel project for. Um, we've done uh, cute little root beer float cotton ball holders for root beer float day, things like that. Um, we've also, we also did the summer uh, writing workshop for a choose your own adventure, uh, our second choose your own adventure writing workshop. Um, the first one we actually published our book this summer, it's called Journey to the Wide World. Oh, cool. And then the second group of kids just finished writing Family of Spies. And so that book will be published this fall, about the same time that we start our second, our third Choose Your Own Adventure writing workshop online. And then we're planning on doing some online camps, um, following up our in-person day camps that we're doing this summer. And what else do we have going on? Just bunches of little things in the background. We have some other classes that we're hoping to run this fall. Um, tutoring, things like that. And then we are working on a plan for possibly doing some live stuff this fall as well, but we don't really have that firmed up yet. So just follow us on Facebook, follow us on our website, follow us on Instagram, and you can find out all that kind of stuff if you're interested. Cool. Thanks, Amelia. Um, and what are your fun at home activities you have for us today? Well, I've got a few things. Um, I think probably the key right now is staying staying cool and and I know that um, so many kids like sensory activities when we are in business at the museum we do a sensory Wednesday every week where we um, we have one activity in the morning and the kids can come and play with it so I've read a couple of those and then I have a craft project too that's really fun so I'm going to start out um, one of the things that I think lots of kids enjoy is a rice table and if you don't have a rice table at home, um, this is kind of a fun mini rice table, but I switched it up because I froze my rice. It's so hot right now um, that it's nice to have a cool activity. So this is pretty inexpensive. You can get these materials. You can even have all this stuff at home already. You can use a salad bowl or any kind of plastic container. Um, I'm recommending two bags of rice. Somehow we managed to have one and two half bags of rice. So that's what I'm going to use. I put these in my freezer so they're really nice and cold. And it's great on a hot day like today. You can sit out in the shade in your yard, which is actually where I am. I'm not actually at the museum today, which is why I'm not wearing my mask. This is actually with two half bags of rice, which is about two pounds of rice. Um, it's actually looking pretty good. 
I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to move my camera down just a little bit so you can see more of the table and less of the me. This is kind of nice just as a fun sensory thing. If you use it on a, a, on a towel in your yard and you want to save the rice for later, um, you can either set it aside and just have this be your play rice, or you can, if it's just your kid and they have clean hands, you can cook the rice later. It's going to get boiled anyway. Um, so that's kind of fun just by itself. And then you can add in some extra elements. There's a little funnel here, a little scoop. Putting and taking and activities where you're filling containers are really fun for kids um, in this age range. And I like it too, and I'm 43. So <laughs> anyone can enjoy this really. And I think sometimes older kids get in on the play because it just feels nice to play with your younger sibling and have something simple like this to do. We have these cute measuring spoons too, which are kind of nice. You pour it over your hands, pour it into the cups. Not every kid is gonna like this. We do rice a lot at the museum and it's one of those things that's hit or miss. Some kids really, really love the rice table. Some kids don't like the texture of anything on their hands. So by keeping an activity really inexpensive like this, if they don't enjoy it, you don't have to force it. It's not like you're, you're out the money or you have to worry about that element at all. So that's my first activity. I recommend this highly. My kiddo loves it. The kids at the museum love it. Um, this next one, it's gonna get a little wet. So I'm gonna recommend that if you're gonna play with water in a small sort of container like we're about to use here, get comfortable with the fact that kids are gonna dump it on themselves and do it in a place where that's okay. So. If you have a kid who's still in diapers, strip them down to their diaper, put towels out in the yard if that's where you're doing it. If you're doing it in your house at the kitchen table, put a towel under the activity area, put a towel on the floor, make it so that they can't fail at this. Make it so that you're setting them up to succeed in exploration. Um, that's my biggest recommendation here because if you're setting them up with a tub of water and then you tell them not to get wet, no one can live up to that expectation, so let's not even try. Um, this is a really popular, popular one that we do at the museum pretty frequently. We do dinosaur wash, we do veggie wash, we do dog wash or car wash. It's really very versatile and it's so simple and you have these things at your house already. You don't have to go buy anything new for this, but it's a new way to use the materials and it's so much fun. So you're going to start out with a tub or container, kind of like the last project, where you um, have just a salad bowl, a plastic container. I'm going to pour about an inch of water into mine. And then anytime you're doing a water activity, you want to make sure that you don't leave your kids unattended, especially if they're really young. Even an inch of water can be dangerous for a really small kid unattended. So don't leave the kid unattended with this. You can also see how a stronger kiddo is going to be able to pick this up and dump it, dump it right on themselves. Again, let that be okay. Um, I have Dawn dish detergent here. Can you see this bottle? Oh, I pulled it out of nowhere. <laughs> I pulled it out of the ether. Um, this is uh, dish soap. I've also done this project with um, shampoo or with uh, body wash. You're not going to give them this full bottle of detergent. You want to control how much soap the kiddos are playing with, how much they're getting on their skin or their mouths or their faces. I have a ketchup bottle. It's full of water. It's been cleaned many times, rinsed, has all the ketchup smell out of it, so there's no sensory overload there. Plain water in here. You're going to screw off the cap. You're going to put one squirt of your soap oh, into this, just a big squirt like that. It's enough to add the scent and the bubbles, but it's not so much that you're going to have to worry about them drinking a lot of soap if they put this in their mouth. You can add food coloring to this if you want it to look more like the soap. We do that sometimes too because the blue is fun to mix in. And then they can just squirt however much they want into their bath, right? Car wash, you would use little cars for it, plunk those in. I've got a big monster truck down here. Um, we have scrubbies. Oh, I had scrubbies. Now I have a sponge and that's okay too. You can use brushes, um, veggie brushes, anything that you would use to do your dishes. As long as they're clean, it's okay to use those brushes, but don't use the same sponges that you do your dishes with for this project because bacteria grows in those kitchen sponges and you don't want your kids to get sick when inevitably they put it in their mouth. This sponge right here is a bath sponge. 
it goes in the tub anyway. It's already probably been in their mouths. If they dry out properly between uses, it's okay to use this. You can also get a new sponge. Um, Dollar Tree or any grocery store can, can find sponges for you. When we did, when we did this um, dino wash project um, recently, we had a kiddo who was very excited about washing all the different kinds of dinosaurs. So if you have lots of different kinds of cars and trucks, you can get out the different kinds, have a nice thick pile of towels or washcloths next to you so they can dry them off afterwards. So it can be a chicken bath, bird bath, put different kinds of birds in there, wash the birds. Again, when you have those scrub brushes or those um, any other kinds of tools, the texture of the tools is kind of nice too to play around with. You're just getting stuff clean. You're learning about hygiene, but you're also having nice cool fun in the shade on a hot day. That's my second project. Am I missing anything on that one? I think I remembered all the hit points. Newer clean scrubbers. Yep, I think I got everything on that one. You can use any temperature of water for that too, as long as it's something that they can touch safely. We've used warm water, we've used cool water. Sometimes when we do this at the museum, we have a big bin over here of the warm and a big bin over here of the cool, so kids can put their hands in one and the other and feel that difference in temperature. And then when they dump it on themselves, that's kind of nice too, because then they, you know, know what they prefer. You can have those towels that they're ready for them. Um, the last project I want to show you, we have a little craft project. Um, the thing I love about this particular project is that it has that um, surprise of size element that I like to use in craft projects for young kids all the time. Um, adults and other age kids really enjoy the surprise of size too. It's why people will travel miles out of their way to see the world's largest ball of twine or why we like kittens so much more than we like seeing cats, right? It's that anything that we see at the regular size is so much better if it's made huge or it's made really tiny. So this project we're making paper bag puppets, but we're not making a regular lunch bag size puppet. We're making a gigantic oh, grocery bag size puppet. Oh, it's trying so hard to show you this, but it can't. Hold on, I'm going to move it real close to the camera and see if that background. <laughs> it's not working. Can you see it now? Oh, uh, God, guys, it's a grocery bag size puppet and it's so cute. Because I'm faking you out with my background, it doesn't know where to focus. Okay, at any rate, you're making a giant puppet with a grocery sack. So these are materials that you have at your house already. Everybody's got a grocery sack, right? So you don't have to go and buy any craft materials for this. The other things you'll need besides your grocery sack are some kind of paper. Um, if you have printer paper, that will work. If you have construction paper, that will work. If you don't have any of those things, you can use a magazine. And what you're going to do first is you're going to find a cup to trace for eyes, right? This cup has a bigger bottom than it has, a bigger top than it has a bottom. So like a solo cup is good for this. This actually might be a solo brand cup, but it's one of those little drink cups that you get in a recyclable package. Ursula, so if I'm going long, just signal me or something. And oh, I think you're good for now. Okay. Yeah. So you'll take your cup and you'll put it on your paper and you'll use a marker or a pen or anything at all to trace around the cup. The big side is going to be on the dark. I'm oh, sorry, the big side is going to be on the light because it's going to be the white of the eye. And then you're going to flip the cup over and trace the bottom to be the middle of the eye. And then you'll cut those out. This is great cutting practice for kids. If you don't mind getting them started on the path of cutting up your magazines, if they know which ones and can keep track in their mind of which ones are okay to cut up and which ones aren't. This is a great cutting practice for kids. Tracing practice is also kind of good too. I use kid scissors for lots of projects because I use them at the museum so much, I'm just used to them. So you've got these big white circles You've got these littler magazine print circles, and then you need something sticky to stick them together. I'm just gonna use masking tape today because that's what I could find most easily. You could use a glue stick. You could use the Elmer's glue that you have in your cupboard for making all that slime you've been making. Stick it together to make the eye. Here's the eye. And then you're gonna put it right on the top of the bag here. Another little roll of tape. So these are really fun for the surprise of size, but you can also make some regular size ones if you wanna have like the daddy puppet and then the baby puppet, or if you wanna do 
um, like Jack and the Beanstalk or Dad and Mom Dog. I don't know. You can use different sizes of bags to make different sizes of puppets this way. I think I have another eyeball. Oh, I don't have it cut out. So this is the, the basics of the project. And then you can put like another piece of paper in the mouth for a tongue like we've got on this other one. So that when you're, you're going to be able to see it this time, yes. When you open its mouth, you can see there's something else inside. How fun. So it'll just be talking to you. And then if you wanted to do a puppet theater, you don't have to get fancy. You don't have to build something new. You just put a sheet over two chairs in your yard. And not only is it a puppet theater that the kids can hide behind or that you can hide behind to put on the show for the kids. Um, but it's also, it doubles as a fort. And forts are awesome for summertime. And it doesn't take a lot of supplies or a lot of work. Just put some towel down, towels down on the lawn, put a couple of chairs on either end and cover it with a sheet. And it's a really nice reading fort or hidey spot. So very calming and wonderful in the in the early part of the day and also you know in the heat of the sun it's nice to be in the shade in the little fort area so those are my big suggestions what do you think i think those are great i think those are things that my kids would enjoy and um also i appreciated that, that they were not too complicated for parents because it's hard to follow a lot of steps <laughs> right now <laughs> it's hard to follow a lot of steps right now and i think that a lot of us um are just feeling that kind of summer burnout where we feel like we've tried everything, we've done everything, we've gone everywhere there currently is to go. And we just need some easy stuff that we can pull out for like 10 minutes of quiet, you know? If you can get a tub of water and have your kids give their, give their dinosaurs or their cars a bath for 10 minutes so that you can finish a thought in your head, it's just such a nice, it's like a little mini vacation that you can just take in your own yard or at your own kitchen table. Just those few minutes of quiet can sometimes help you reset and have the patience to carry on with the rest of the day. That's so important right now when you've got, you know, these months behind you, finding that patience and those minutes to yourself can be really important. So yeah. we encourage you to try some of these things. Well, thanks so much, Amelia. Yeah, and if you're not following um, Adventure Children's Museum on Facebook, I definitely encourage you guys to check it out and find out more um, about what they have to offer. Yeah, please do. We'd love to have some of you follow us there and then send me an email if you have any questions about anything. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye, Amelia. Thank you.